Arizona desert, an arid and vast territory commonly known as the Valley of the Sun. But this weekend, it's a battleground, soon to become Valley of Champions. Tomorrow, it'll be a super showdown. But tonight, for Bernard Hopkins and Terry Norris, it's the chance to prove themselves worthy of the title of champion. For some, visions of becoming the best is a hard-fought reality, while for others, it's merely a mirage. Tonight, the desert epitomizes survival of the fittest and is the perfect setting for championship boxing. metropolis of phoenix set well within the vast arizona desert along with neighboring tempe these two communities provide an oasis for travelers and residents alike and as host of the biggest party of the year super bowl 30 this entire area is bursting with championship fever we all know that the game is less than 24 hours away and the excitement has been building to a crescendo all week long and tonight, we'll add to that championship fever right here inside of Arizona Veterans Memorial Coliseum, which is the former home of the Phoenix Suns. This evening, however, it's playing host to championship title fights and the first installment in Fox Sports' late-night boxing series. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Phoenix. I'm James Brown, and we've got a terrific night of boxing in store for you, and Fox Sports is proud to be bringing it your way. Tonight, two champions with something to prove look to continue their winning ways. Headlining tonight's main event is the IBF middle titleweight total, Philadelphia's Bernard the Executioner Hopkins. Now, with only 14 pounds separating the three middleweight divisions and most of that attention going to the super middleweights, namely Roy Jones Jr. and Nigel Benn, Hopkins looks to establish himself as the finest fighter in the 160-pound class. And with more on the champion, the guy who's working the fight with us tonight, is our reporter, Eric Clements. Eric? James, thank you very much. To my left is a man they call the executioner, the IBF champion, Bernard Hopkins. Bernard has executed a big turnaround in his life, five-year prison stint, now a champion, and works with the same kids in the North Philadelphia area you grew up in. What do you tell them you represent inside and out of the ring? Well, inside of the ring, I represent myself as a boxer, a professional fighter. As the executioner, I execute my ability and my skill as to be the best that I can be. For the kids and the young teenagers and the young women and men and the kids that's coming up, execution can be all types of things to them. It can be executing your ability to be a better person, to respect yourself, and also uh, talents that you might not know you have, that you have to execute once you find out what your talents are and execute it. So, you know, my profession is executing in the ring. That's what I know how to do best. So all the children and young men and young women out there, execute your ability to learn and to be a better person. All right, Bernard Hopkins, we'll see him a little bit later on. Let's go back upstairs now to James Brown. All right, Eric, thank you very much. He is indeed a very intense young man who's got a story to tell. He's pulled himself up by his own bootstraps, and we'll hear about that throughout the evening. You know, in tonight's other big bout, the man who recently unified the WBC and the IBF 154-pound crowns, Terrible Terry Norris. He's had his share of triumphs and setbacks, but this devastating fighter now appears fine to maintain his stature as the best in his class. Introducing a terrible Terry Norris. And there's a right left combination thrown by Terry Norris. Norris living up to his explosive style.
will face this evening, Jorge Luis Vado, a man who has aspirations to match that of his legendary fellow countryman, Alexis Arguello. Vado knows that he carries the hopes of Nicaragua into this title fight. And for more on this fight, right now let's take you downstairs ringside to the men who will be calling the action tonight, Barry Tompkins, Bobby Chez, and Sean O'Grady. Barry? All right, thanks very much, JV. Well, Terry Norris is a very unique breed of cat. As a matter of fact, right at the moment, he's one of a kind. You know, there are 48 different champions in boxing amongst the initial war that is the sport of boxing. Terry Norris, the only man to hold a unified title. He holds two-thirds of the super welterweight or junior middleweight title. Only Jose Cesar Vasquez, Julio Cesar Vasquez, I beg your pardon, is out there to completely unify that title. Well, alongside the two-time two champion, Bobby Chess, and Bobby, let's talk a little bit about Terry Norris and his ambition. Can he unify this title three ways? Barry, I think he has an excellent chance of unifying the title. He's an excellent fighter. His all-around abilities are superior to most. Great foot and hand speed. He can punch with both hands. Good defense. He's an excellently conditioned athlete. athlete. And on top of all that, at the championship level, he may have no peer in experience. However, he has two drawbacks. Number one, he does not have a championship chin. And number two, he has a tendency to foul. He seemed to have corrected the fouling. He has been trying. But he's back to boxing. The same Terry Norris to beat Sugar Ray Leonard because Julio Cesar Vasquez is a tremendous punching southpaw. And one punch can change the course of history and that division. All right, but him, for him, it's a case of first things first. I'm surrounded by champions alongside the former lightweight champion, Sean O'Grady. Sean, let's talk about the fight tonight. He's got to worry about Jorge Luis Vada before he can worry about anything else. And very frankly, it's guys like Vada that have given him problems. A fight that you just say, oh, yeah, he's going to go out there and win this one. Yeah, he has given us a few surprises in the past. When he's expected to win, he loses. A lot of times he's in the fights overlooking his adversary right in front of him. In this fight, he better not be overlooking Jorge Luis Vado. Vado is strong. He's got a lot to prove coming into this fight. Remember the losses for Terry Norris, his fight with Luis Santana. Two of the three losses, he lost concentration. Remember the fight with Simon Brown, the first one, he lost concentration and lost that fight. And in this fight tonight and coming into this ring, a lot to prove with Vado. Terry Norris is talking about bigger and better paydays down the road. He's talking about a fight with Brunel Whitaker, Felix Travedad, uh, Trinidad, but he better be focused on his business at hand. And Votto is the guy that he really needs to focus on. Yes, it's the Super Bowl tomorrow here in the States. It's the Super Bowl tonight in Nicaragua, the home of Jorge Luis Votto. We'll be back. cold Miller Lite. Life is good. We welcome you back to Phoenix, Arizona. Just about set to go with our first fight, Terry Norris and Jorge Luis Vado. This for the IBF and WBC 154-pound championship currently held by Terry Norris. Let's take a look at how these two match up with one another, and they are very comparable. Comparable in age, Votto a year the senior of Norris, comparable in height, Votto a half inch to the good, and Votto came in coming in one pound heavier than Norris. A little bit of a reach advantage for Votto. I really doubt that that will have a big factor on the outcome of this fight. The rules here in Arizona for tonight's fight, there will be no standing eight count, there will be no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and significantly, perhaps, the fighter cannot be safe for the bell in any round including the 12th and final round. So with that, we are just about set to get started. And let's go up to the center of the ring right now and Jimmy Lennon Jr. Jimmy. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the Arizona Veterans Memorial Coliseum here in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. As we have a big night of action coming your way, that's all brought to you by Don King Productions and Miller Light. At this time, we present one of our featured attractions coming your way, and it is sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman, and the International Boxing Federation President Robert Lee Sr. and Supervisor Al Lucas, along with the Arizona State Boxing Commission, the Chairman is Stephen Friedman, and the Executive Director John Montano. Introducing to you the judges, scoring this down from ringside, Gwen Adair, Tony Castellano, and Howard Ritchie. Introducing to you our referee in charge, and he will be giving instructions after the introductions, Roger Yonez. All right, fans. 
up, we've got a couple of changes, okay? The uh, three knockdown rule has been waived. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round, okay? I don't want to see any wrestling or holding. If I have to warn you, I'll warn you only once. When I ask you to break, break clean. Touch gloves and good luck. When I press it. set to go, and I think the early part of this fight, Sean, is going to be really significant, particularly for the challenger bottom. Oh, yeah, he has a lot to prove, and he wants to come out early in this match and prove to Terry Norris a couple of things. First of all, that I'm here to stay. I'm going to be in here in your face all night, and he's got to crack him a little bit. This is a kid in bottom who had 10 KOs in his 13 wins, so the kid has some power, and he realizes that Terry Norris, we've seen him with pretty fragile whiskers in the past. That's what he said when we talked to him. He said the weakness in Terry Norris, I don't guess this is a great secret, is his chin. Well, you know, even Terry and I have talked about it, and sometimes I've told him, your heart's bigger than your chin will allow for it. You can't be that brave when you know a big punch you can hurt you. you got to sit back and box and stop letting your pride overrule your brain. That's what he's done, and now he's trying to get back to the same Terry Norris to beat you great. That Terry Norris that's almost unbeatable. One thing that is significant, and that is that Norris obviously, obviously has done his homework on Vada, although there wasn't much to be found. But he did say he was... A looping puncher and early in this fight, the first couple punches that Vada was throwing have been exactly that. Yeah, further he said, no boxing skills that I have to worry about. With Vado, he's going to come right at me. And uh, break, break, he says, break, I hear he can break. punch him a little bit. Vado's big power is in the right hand. He describes his style, Vado, as aggressive. Terry Norris is trying to mix in more boxing with his power punching. This powerful left hook from him. His best punch is that left hook, he says. Yeah, Terry has to work off that jab, keep Vado off balance. If he lets him get inside and dig some of those shots, anything can happen when you have a championship at the chin. Terry has everything else almost perfect. Early on, Norris is getting off quicker than Vado. Vado, again, throwing punches outside in. Norris is punches much more straight, much more effective early in the fight. a replay of Terry Norris coming in on the inside. He's landing the big left hook. Again, his speed's a big factor here. Big factor. And I think one question was answered in the first three minutes of this fight, and that is that Terry Norris is paying attention to Jorge Luis Vado. He's not taking this for granted. Yeah, some of the change in his style. Really a, a fighter that takes his career seriously. You focus inside the ring. It's basically even more with fighters like Vado because they come in and they come up, they rise up a little. They, they level. They fight better. Sometimes when they catch you looking, it hurts doubly bad because you don't see it in your
Terry Norris in the first round got Votto to backing up, giving him the distance that Terry Norris needs in order to land the big shot. Votto got on the end of his punches and Terry just cleaned up. You can't run from a fighter like Terry Norris. He's too good. He will hunt you down. He'll cut off the ring and make you accept his punches. That's what Terry did tonight. That's what made him champion of the world. I'd be interested to know how many jabs Votto threw in that fight, because if there were any, I didn't see them. Not that many jabs, especially by Votto. And Norris doing what he had to do. He did pay attention to a lesser opponent. He got him out of there in a big hurry. So Terry Norris, 42 seconds into the second round, disposes of Jorge Luis Votto. The Super Bowl is over in Managua. We'll be back. Well, it didn't take long for this man to dispose of uh, an opponent that you can't even really call pesky, but Jorge Luis Votto came here undefeated. He leaves with one loss. Let's get the official announcement now as we go up to the center of the ring and Jimmy Lennon Jr. Jimmy. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 42 seconds in round number two. The referee in charge, Roger Yannis, reaches the count of 10. The winner by way of... Terrible Terry Norris was just that, especially in the mind of Jorge Thank Luis Votto. Sean, let's take another look at the knockout. I believe it was a right hand that started him and a left hand that finished him. Yeah, consummate professional against a man that is not that experienced. In the first round, he got Beto standing out at the end of, the end of his punches, and there's what happened. Crack, that final snap right on the end sends Beto down to the canvas. Here it is again, Beto giving too much respect and too much room. Crack, just on the side of the jaw. Look at the legs of Beto. That's what happens when you get knocked out. Your your legs leave the arena with Elvis. Another look at it again. And look at this right hand. Set it up with the jab. Even though the jab misses, it's a prop. And then connecting with the right hand. Down goes Jorge Luis Vado. Vado, Vado. Didn't have the experience. Call it what you will, just call it. And meanwhile, Terry Norris is still the two-time champion looking to bigger and better we've got a lot more to come on super bowl eve and we'll be back after this word from your local station well when we talked to jorge luis Votto yesterday he said he could ko terry norris terry norris could ko him so let's go they went so did Votto. and right now bobby jess is in the center of the ring with the winner terry norris bobby here with Terry Norris and still champion Terry. I thought that the speed was a big factor here. And in the Vegas fight, a lot of people yelling for a knockout scream. Did you want to make a statement here tonight? Uh, really, you know, I came out this morning, this morning really just set him up and uh, drop a good shot on him. I knew that uh, he hasn't said he would knock me out earlier, so I kind of want to prove to him that I can punch too and, and show him. So I hit him with some good shots in the first round. I didn't take him out in the second round. I just set him over a good jab, right hand, and take him out. But uh, in the ball Vegas fight, I wanted to show him, you know, a boxing lesson. It would have been nice to knock him out later on, but I can't catch up with him. He's too busy running. Uh, also, you're the only world champion right now that has two of the world titles in your division. Are there any plans for unification with Leo Cesar Vasquez? And if so, when do you see that happen? Uh, I think uh, we might have that already set, set up in, uh, in March. In March 16th. Yeah, March 16th with, uh, with Tyson. With Tyson, uh, I think that's what it is. Uh, but right now, you know, I'm, I got Pernell Whitaker and Trinidad on my mind. I want to fight both those guys. I want them to say, pound for pound, the best fighter in the world. I believe I'm the best fighter in the world. So, uh, Come on, Bernard Woodick. I'll fight you at 140. All right. We got a replay here. Take a look at the modern call for us. This is a, a replay of the knockdown call for us. Uh, well, basically, just setting him up. Uh, there was a little hook right there. But it should have been a jab, but uh, right hand followed out. They caught him with a good right hand. That hurt him, and then finished him off with another right hand. Well, certainly a short and sweet night. And I'm, on your end, that's always a good victory. Uh, the very next fight for you is when? Um, the 24th of, uh, what is it? February 24th. Yeah, February 24th. Yeah, Vincent Fenway. Yeah, Vincent Fenway, sir. Damn busy. That's what I like. So, uh, you know, I'm bringing all comers. Come, come, if you get your pound pound of this fight in the world, come fight me. Coming right back in February, then again in March. Yeah, and again in March. And, uh, to, uh, get all the titles. I want, want all the titles and move up to middleweight. I'll fight uh, Pernell Whitaker. Okay, so we can look forward to an undisputed junior middleweight champion of the world soon in March. Sorry, we thank you. And we're going to go back to the ringside now and Barry Thompson. All right, thanks very much, Bobby. Well, the longest journey starts with but a single step, and I think it's fair to say that Terry Norris took that single step, albeit a small step tonight. He's got a lot in front of him. He's got Pentway, he's got Vasquez, and then he says he wants...
wants Whitaker or Trinidad. We've still got our main event coming up. Bernard Hopkins, the middleweight champion, taking on Steve Frank. That and a whole lot more.